I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All the Mods 9. So back into some more All the Mods 9. In last episode, we left off here. Yes, we went through our Stargate, and now we're off to adventure. <laughs> I have no idea what's in store, but I do know this is a giant castle wall here, and it's full of sand, so at least we don't have to worry about a desert anytime soon. It does appear this just continues to be a fort, but maybe there's more to this area that I just don't know about. Now, looking around, it doesn't really appear to be a whole lot, at least around the fort area, but I'm sure if we explore a little bit, maybe we'll be able to find something off in the dunes. Now that definitely appears to be something that looks like a pyramid and I didn't have to walk all that far to get here. Now the scary part, are we able to do anything in this place? I have no idea what to expect. Just in case, I'm going to place down a waystone just so we can get back just in case. All right. Ooh, I do, I do hear monsters. Just be worried. And I didn't bring any torches which is probably an unfortunate decision that I have decided to make. There are stairwells. Okay, are these technically torches? These are all kind of bright. Oh, there's there's definitely the throne. Hmm. Now, there's this thing right here. It says ring panel. Oh, oh this has like different... Whoa! Okay. Okay, okay, we don't have... Okay, we don't have any protection from spawners. Okay. Is there anything here? Okay, I'm gonna try and grab as much as I can while I can. Oh, goodness. And try not to die, even though I'm probably going to because I was not prepared. I need torches. <laughs> we need a torch launcher first. This is why I placed that down. Come here. Get out of here. It's the little ones. It's the little ones that get you. Okay, so these... Th this this is all gear, though. Okay, and we do have some other materials. Interesting, and gold blocks. You know, the gold blocks are actually kind of worth it. Okay, so now that I know I need torches, let's see if we can't go back up. I don't know if that takes us back. Oh, it does. Okay. Woo! And so we should be able to go grab some torches, and then we'll be ready to go. Now, we also have some quests that we could probably accept that are uh, that are inside of our quest book that have some rewards here. These are under the common tier. But still, that's a mega torch we just got. Okay, we got a beehive. And then over here, we should get an iron furnace. I will take that. We're still really early game, in my opinion. And then we also got a copper upgrade. That'll be nice for drawers. Um, okay, so we found food. We found villagers. We get a bucket. I will take it. That mega torch will be fantastic. And we get some inferior essence. So that's just all from some of the basic quests. Just things that we're going to complete just from playing the game. Now, just from that armor that we got, this is already better than the current gear that we have. Like, by quite a bit, actually. And uh, we do have, let's see, these pants and these boots that have, um, it, it, yeah, it has apotheosis upgrades on it already. So, yes, definitely worth the upgrade. And look at us now. Wow, we are already in better gear than Diamond. And now this is just from day one, basically, of exploring. Day one, and now we're on day two of exploring. What? Let's head back down to this position. And now we can light this up. And we are way more equipped for this. I'm definitely going to try and place down as many torches. These are basically spawner arenas already set up, though. I mean, in reality, this is exactly what this is. We should be able to use this, and now we have a bunch of string. I'm interested. Oh my goodness. That is a ton of loot. Okay. There is a ton of loot in there. Of all different kinds. I am stuck in the cobwebs, I think. <laughs> That's a ton of stuff. Okay, I hope my bag can handle this. Do I even have the storage for it? There's tons of Rs materials. Oh, this was definitely, definitely a good find. I haven't even looted this side. Oh, but I can only imagine. Yes. 
Oh my goodness. What is that? Rotten Spellbook. Oh, this is from the Iron Spellbook mod. And this already has slots that we can equip things in. Oh, that's a mod that I definitely want to dive into a little bit because there's some really cool effects that you can give yourself. Um, Because I did get to play around with that a little bit whenever I was streaming this. Now, inside this room, there is a golden idol, and every ounce of me is saying, do not break this, the whole building will collapse. And I blame that on adventure movies. But, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to take it anyways. And uh, we did find a magnet upgrade, which is really nice, um, for a backpack. And, well, I have a golden idol. And apparently, this is the key to unlocking pretty much the entire mod, as we're going to gain access to a new type of villager once we use this to create an archaeology table. Now, as far as I know, these other floors, they don't lead you to anywhere, at least right now. So all I can do is go back to the main floor, which I really love this teleportation method. This is so golden. So this is working. And so now we should probably head back and see what these villagers can do. Now, another thing to mention, according to the wiki for this mod, apparently the dimension that we're on is the uh, the Abydos, um, and that's that's where we're at. We're basically in the planet Abydos, I believe, and there's supposed to be ore that we can mine in here, um, in this dimension. And I know it's going to be probably pretty difficult to find, but it does look like there is stone down there, and it'd probably be better to mine this once we have some semblance of a quarry later on down the road um, to really further our progression through this mod. But it is really nice that early on we got this nice little loot boost. Now, I definitely want to make this thing as once we end up getting this villager leveled up, once we have ourselves easy villagers set up, it's going to be a lot quicker. And once we have it set up, we should be able to get ourselves a map that'll lead us to another one of these uh, these stargates, um, potentially. So that's going to, have to be something we definitely work on later on. And I'm pretty excited to do that. And that's going to lead to another dimension. And we could potentially use those stargates as a way to travel across the world. But until then, I need to get out of this barn. <laughs> I'm literally still in a barn. And so I think today would also be a good day to locate a base. Or at least a place to call a base, that is. Now, I think this area is going to be perfect for this. However, I'm going to need to clear out a ton of these birch trees. But this is going to be perfect. This is actually really close to our village. So we do still have access to our village from here. And then this whole area, we should be able to take advantage of and even utilize this little river that is technically here and i think this river also leads over here into a cave it looks like of some kind yes yeah we do have access to some sort of cave that does appear to lead down deeper which would be really nice and give us nice access to the underground quickly i can't believe this right outside the village as i'm heading back to the other area after gathering some items there's just a free waystone setting over there so th that makes that a little easier so we'll just call this new base area, and this is where I'm going to be at. Now, I went ahead and made an iron axe, and there's actually a way that you can infinitely repair these tools. So using the silent gears is amazing because we can actually make ourselves a sturdy repair kit, which is one of the best ones early on. And we just basically feed this iron. It allows us to repair our tools because when these break, they don't just disappear, meaning you can retain your enchantments, which I think is very, very valuable. And also they're upgradable as we go along. And there's all kinds of different things you can put on these tools, which will help out in the long run. So just from simply clearing out these trees, as you see, this is now broke and it'll say you broke it. How dare you? But it also recommends that uh, you craft a repair kit like I had just mentioned. We'll get one, we'll get one. But first I wanna get some storage set up and then we can go mining. Now, this is one of the effects that can possibly happen at night. And it's called a blood moon, and yes, it just occurred. And the unfortunate part is I don't think we can actually sleep while this is going on. Um, yeah. Now, luckily for us, we do have a mega torch, so that should help a little bit in preventing mobs from spawning around us. Uh, but there's already mobs that have spawned. I honestly want to see how hard mobs hit. Okay, so we're essentially still fully protected. Okay, so they're still not bad. Um, and I, that's, I'm so surprised in this gear. Okay, there we go. So the skeletons do at least a half a heart, but we immediately regenerate it. Oh, also, <laughs> I know there's a lot here, but you do have a knowledge of death, and there are some useful things that we could invest into that are in this, and it looks like we have one point we can spend, and I really like the idea of potentially getting a potion bonus, maybe, 
or retain experience on death would be nice if we plan on dying, which I mean, I really don't plan on dying anytime soon. Um, hmm. There's also this one. Treasure Seeker increases the chance of finding special items from this mod, which actually is, is a pretty cool thing because there are some really cool tomes that we can actually get. Those are the tomes from Coral Tombstones, which kind of work like long lasting potion effects. Well, I think while this is going on, it might be best if I can start to potentially work my way down into this mine. Man, I really feel like I'm spelunking right now. Uh, straight up going down into the unknown. But we have Vein Miner. I should be able to easily grab up all of this redstone, all of these goodies that we see laying around. Oh, finally, the Blood Moon is gone. I think the worst part about the Blood Moon is the sound, but I know I can turn it down and I definitely will next time. And we can do that actually by clicking this button here and we should be able to search for that sound. And I'm pretty sure it's just called Blood Moon. And so yes, this is definitely getting turned down. Now, so far so good in mining. Um, I'm definitely finding some really cool things like that creeper right there. And if that creeper exists, I can only imagine what other creepers exist. And I know that cave creepers, a very specific type of creeper, like the one creeping up on me right here. This is a dripstone one. But they do have very interesting loot pulls, unless they've been changed. Yeah, like the cave one has a chance of dropping diamonds, gold, iron, everything. Like you would literally make a farm off of it and never need to mine for those resources again. Now, this pack is going to require tons of creativity like that. We're going to need to find tons of different ways to farm certain resources as we go on. Because it may seem like we have everything at some point. But believe me, once we get to the All the Modium Star, which is the in-game goal of the pack, I'm going to realize real quick that I probably don't have as much as I actually thought I did. Now, that's where I really want to focus on setting up infrastructure. I want to have infrastructure in place that is going to be scalable and allow us to uh, pretty much any time we need another uh, thing, we can we can just generate more of it by adding on. That's kind of how I want to work on developing our sort of base. Now, don't get me wrong. Just because we're setting up infrastructure doesn't mean that we're not going to adventure. There is plenty of adventure still waiting for us in this pack and uh, a lot of loot to still be gained. Oh boy, speaking of loot, this. <laughs> this is a very interesting mechanic and I absolutely love it, but it still scares me to this day. Because when I walk up to this, I still never know if there's going to be a mimic here. And I may be spoiling it by mentioning the fact that a mimic even exists. But it can be very scary whenever you open this chest up and a monster jumps at you. But let's see what we get. Oh, goodness. So nothing, but this loot can be very, very spicy in here. So it is definitely worth grabbing anytime you see this setup. But be warned, be warned. This can be a trapped setup as well. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to keep an eye out on all of this. Oh, I am so thankful for caves like this. It just makes mining so much better than just breaking blocks. And our entire pathway has led to this point, which is fantastic. And look at this, we even found a geode just chilling right here. Oh, it's nice. These are just niceties that I really enjoy. Oh boy, here's another one of those spawners. I wonder if I can stop it from spawning. This is a poison spider. Very scary. Okay, let's hurry up and mine it. There we go. Woo! We can grab this. Ooh, we got a necromancy. And we also ended up getting a name tag. That's very nice. And a repellent book with some iron. I'll take all of that. Ah, just another perfect example of why these caves are amazing. There's usually tons of these things. Oh, Jesus! That's what I had just mentioned! It's, it's horrifying, all right? When these guys spawn. It is a guaranteed artifact, I believe, from these. But man, when it jumps at you, it just startles the crap out of you. Why? Why must you do that to me? Okay, so we ended up getting grants, it grants immunity to knockback. So we got steadfast spikes, uh, which we can go ahead and equip and we can wear. This should prevent knockback. There's a lodestone here, which means there's a spawner and which means there's more loot. Yes, I will take this. And slime is something that I've always sort of struggled with early game. Uh, but we've found it through looting, which has been very nice. And this is a great way to get some really nice artifacts that will definitely help us in our progression. That was one. I didn't even check it. Yep. Rip. Okay. Well, it didn't explode. Maybe because there was water nearby. Ah, oh, there was water right next to it. That was a save. 
absolute save right there. That was that water clutched that. Yes. <laughs> that prevented that whole chest from exploding. Oh, that was so good. That was so good. Now, the amazing part as well about having these waystones is we can just set our location in the mine here and we can just say mine and we can come back. When we come back, we can just pick this up. So we, we should be able to head back to our new base, unload all of our goodies here. And oh, this is just, it's so convenient. And now it should have everything to be able to make the sturdy repair kit. And we should be able to simply just add iron to this, by the way, like this. Or you can just do one at a time. It's usually better to fill the whole inventory with as much iron as you have. And then we can add this to our tool to repair it. And uh, it does have an e a repair efficiency, so it'll be better at repairing the higher tier repair kit we go. But we have to go into the nether and then the end in order to get to the next tiers. Look who showed up to the smelting party, only to be completely wrecked for the free leaves. Ah, yes. Very nice. And we end up getting the sword of Alfred GG and uh, a pedestal. And then we also get ourselves some random reward for doing that. That's interesting. What does this sword have on it, though? For those brave enough to slaughter the mighty and annoying traitor. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> the sword goes directly down into it like it's straight out of the sword in the stone. So now I'm prepping for something big right now. I'm, I'm sort of building out like a basic base, just so we have a place to store items so we can do more adventuring. Uh, but in that process, we are going to get storage set up. That's right. We're going to be getting our first sort of inkling of storage, which is going to require access to a very simple power source and a very simple mod. That is going to be RF tools. Oh, also, when you're building, don't forget that wands exist in here. <laughs> yes. And uh, by the way, I do like to show this because if you are watching, I absolutely you just need to know this. You need this. And I absolutely need to tell you, you need to hold down control and shift. When you right click in the air, it gives you a ton of options. One being it can randomize the placed items that are in your hotbar, which is amazing. And in this pack, it'll automatically put them in your hotbar for you, like and keep them refilled, which is really nice. Um, and then you can also, if you apps, if you accidentally go, whoops, and I do this, you can hold down control and shift again. And when you right click, it will undo. So just a nice little feature of the wand. Now we can go ahead and get our base storage scanner set up. This is from RF Tool Storage. This is probably one of the easiest storage mods to get set up. And you can set this up as soon as you get yourself literally two ender pearls and have done your first mining session. Now it is going to require a little bit more and that's because really in order to function, it is going to need a power source. I mean, we can place this anywhere. So we could technically place this directly on top here and then we can go ahead and place the storage scanner and now it's in place. But like I said, it doesn't have any power. So what I was thinking about making is just a simple solar panel, not the nitro one, but if we go all the way down to the lowest of the low, a very basic starter solar panel, um, we can see that this is not too bad. We just need a little bit of lava, clay, coal, and we should have all of the basic components in order to make this. Just right over in the adjacent biome, we have ourselves a lava pool. I'm gonna keep this in mind, this might come in handy. So just like this, we should have everything we need. Solar panel, get. Just like that, we now have ourselves a solar panel. And a 40 FE should be enough. This is gonna produce like basically 40 FE per tick. And that should be quite a bit. Now it is only gonna produce it during the day, right? <laughs> so we're gonna have to just keep an eye on that. And uh, we might lose power on blood moons as that keeps it permanently night and we can't really sleep through that. So. That's the only downside to using this. And there are other generators that we can get into, such as these right here. And a copper one is not too bad. It does produce 20 FE, where this is producing 40, but hopefully this is sustainable enough, even through the night to keep us running. Now for the actual storage containers themselves, I actually prefer to use barrels. And there's a good reason for that. Um, so we can upgrade these barrels later on, which is gonna be really nice. I think they look good. And the storage scanner handles chests kind of weird. Um, they'll actually scan both sections of the chests, and sometimes this, that can lead to it displaying duplicates of items even though they don't exist. And so the best way to get around that is by just simply using barrels. But I think barrels are really nice because you can open them in any sort of configuration and setting them up in some sort of storage stack is really easy to do. Now the cool part about setting all of this, this stuff up is you actually can be a little bit creative with this. So you can set up spires, for example, like I'm doing here, 
And what I want to do is just kind of make them look like they've spired up uh, with the storage and they have this sort of top here. And then I want to fade out the way that this uh, this sort of outline is. I don't want it to be 100% blocky. This is our starting storage and that's really all it is. It's not our ultimate base. It is just going to be though our storage platform. So it's done. It's sort of set up. I also kind of faded out the side and made it look more like it was sort of a structure that was here already. Kind of, I, I don't know. It's just a bunch of cyan terracotta, which is honestly one of my favorite colored blocks in the game. It's so good. And I'm so glad we're in a biome that just has it. So how does this work? Because by default, we can't really send anything into it. What we have to do is actually scan. And so uh, I believe that this number right here is the radius out that it will extend. So if I set it to uh, one, which is what it's set to right now, it's only gonna scan the blocks that it's next to itself. And if I expand it out, so one, two, three, four, five, six, it should technically at six, a radius of six or seven, um, it should now see all of the barrels. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to seven just to make sure. Um, you could set it all the way to max, then it's gonna scan 20 blocks within. So if you wanna be more precise, you can do that. But all we have to do is just go through here and select the ones that are routable. Um, and then once we have all of the routable barrels, which is this is just gonna be a mass storage, we can then just simply use this as our main storage to craft from. It's really simple. Now I will consider this the basic of basic storage setups early game in this pack, as there are several options. And my goodness, there would be no way for me to cover them all. But there are some magic options. You have Ars Nouveau you can get into. Shoot, you even have occultism you can get into storage, but you have to go to the nether before you can do that one. And then you also have integrated dynamics, which also has a way of getting into a storage mod. All of these are fantastic, uh, but I feel like this one is the most accessible for everyone. And it's so simple to use. You don't really need to know anything about it. You just need to simply place the items in after you get your storage uh, set up, the, the things you want to use for storage, and you're good to go. Now, some other awesome news about this storage is, well, once we go ahead and upgrade to a different storage, we can still utilize this storage. Uh, for example, if we upgrade to refined storage or applied energistics, all we have to do is hook up an external storage or storage bus, and bam, we have access to all of the items that it's scanned for. Now, this is going to only further help me out in our search of good loot. Um, so now we can loot freely and not have to worry about a chest monster building up. And man, oh man, is there just a lot of loot. There was an enchanting table and an anvil and a wither skeleton skull. Yes, uh, this is why I said looting is very powerful. So guys, with that, I'm pretty satisfied today. We got ourselves some storage and now things only get crazier from here because well, once I get a hold of some storage, I can now craft like nobody's business. So, well, I hope to see you in the next episode. And the best way to be notified of the next episode is to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a huge thumbs up. I thank you guys so very much for watching. And well, I do want to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. That amazing thanks is going to go out to... Stop Camping BM. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord Premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. Yes, be sure to join the Discord if you haven't already. Check out the link down in the description below, or you can go to discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. That's one of the best ways to join their amazing community of over 30,000 members and growing every day. It's a great place to get support, get some help, find a friend. It's just a great community overall. So I would love for you to join. And guys, well, you know how it goes, as always. Thanks for watching. Bye.